What's up, Ken Gonda? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson, back with a special episode of Fair Use. And I'll be reacting to a YouTuber by the name of Sweet Moxie. She is a Nigerian woman that has moved to Luxembourg. And uh, her title of her video is called Stop Traveling to Nigeria. Why I Will Never Travel to Nigeria Again. Some very powerful things she's going to say about why many Africans move away from their homeland and don't want to return. Uh, but let's get into the video. I left Nigeria and coming back two years later, things became worse. I'm not talking about the bad roads in Nigeria. We're not even ready for that topic. Roads in Nigeria that are really, really bad. Bad road network and all of that. That one is by the way. But in 2022, what stops Nigeria from having light? Oh my God. In 2022, I live in a country where before they take light in this country, they will have to make an announcement. See, oh, there will be no light. Like they have to program people's mind that okay, from so so time and so so time, there will be no light. In fact, since I came to this country, they've not taken light. But let's say they want to work in the apartment. Okay, they want to work in our building. They will have to tell us, see, they are working. Oh, even ordinary water, they will tell us they want to switch off the water from so 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 time and so so time. The tap won't be flowing. Or there will be no light from so so time and so so time. That means you program your mind, you program yourself that okay, there will be no light. You look for an alternative. Maybe you you do what you're supposed to do before the light goes off, or you wake up early to have your bath before the water goes off and all of that. But all these things are social amenities that they know that people need. You don't stop people from using water. What is there? You use water, you pay. If you use water, depending on how you use, like in my house, like every day we are washing, because then it will play and play and then bring. So let me kind of, you know, kind of stop her there. So I, I've never been to Nigeria, but I, I've definitely lived um, in Uganda for an extensive amount of time. And in in Poland or in Luxembourg in Europe, if they the power is going to go out, it's just like the United States. You know, you would probably be aware beforehand that it's going to happen. Um, whereas in, in in Africa, you could just be sitting there talking and just boom, like cut the light off, yeah, the light goes off, right? And that's something that you might not understand when you live in Africa and if you're grown up there, it's become normal. But when you come to a place like Luxembourg or somewhere in Germany or Western Europe or even Eastern Europe, you see a lot of these things that the government is providing to its citizens. I think even in Luxembourg, they have like free transportation for anybody in the country. You know, you see all of these amenities that you have. And then the thing that you're thinking about is the country that I came from, why don't they have it? Like the money is there, the opportunities are there. So why don't we have what these people have in the new country where I'm an immigrant at? Let's go. Round two. My dirty clothes, so I'm always washing, okay? The kids' clothes. In a week, I can wash their clothes like three times. Yes, so when, we, when I use all that water to wash, at the end of the month, we pay. It is our money. The money goes into the system. The money goes into the government cost. They use it to build road. I, am, I live in Luxembourg. I live in a country where even a small pothole is detrimental. Like a small pothole, the government cannot leave that pothole. They must work on it. There is no time you go out there, you're not seeing contractors on the road. Contractors that <clears throat> contractors are there working. Okay, yes. So go okay. Sorry, sorry, I don't want to deviate. What was I saying? I was talking about light. Yes. In 2022, there is no light in Nigeria. There is no light in Nigeria. A lot of people still use candle to sleep. A lot of people still sleep in darkness. There is no light. Let's kind of fast forward, rewind back to the part where she said about 
the money goes into a particular system and they fix the potholes. All right, so let me talk about that. One of the issues that I've noticed from people from the black diaspora is that they don't trust that the government will do something with taxation money. So if I'm paying taxation money, then what should be used from that money to reinvest into the infrastructure? That is not happening. Uh, and I'm not trying to diss any of the African countries, but I've been to some of them. And then you can really see there's a lot of potholes. You know, I've been in the back of Bodas before. And when you've been in the back of the Bodas, you know, like you could just hit a pothole and then somebody can just, you know, almost die, you know. And what people are saying is, well, you want us to pay these taxes, but then when we pay these taxes, you cannot fix this pothole. But when I'm paying taxes in Luxembourg, if there's any small pothole, it is detrimental to the entire society, even one little pothole. And then you can go to so many African countries and there are many. Let's go. Round three. The bad road, bad road, that one day, that one day on its own. But things became worse. I left Nigeria in 2019. Things were better. The promise does change. Where is the change? Things became worse. Every day, justice for this, justice for that. The country grew more rapist. People take laws into their hands. People don't want... How do I say it? A lot of people out there are crying. Seeking for justice. The country is not serving justice. How do you imagine a country that enjoys inflicting pain on its citizens to serve justice? How? Is that possible? Is that possible? A country that is known for its taking of loan from different countries. How? Country that takes loan and loan. Our politicians, our politicians... They end so much for one person. That is very true. Uh, Nigeria, they have senators and politicians making more than, I think, some people um, in the States. Uh, I know in certain English-speaking countries, you have people who are called MPs. Some of them make like 10 grand a month, and then you have a teacher making like $100 a month. Uh, this is what I've been told, and I've seen this before um, on certain records. But, yeah, what she's talking about these are issues that have to be fixed. Um, I'm not saying it. She's saying it. Let's go. Final round. The end so much. A country that lies. Lie, Mohammed. A country that lies. They lie. They lie. A country that has poverty. Nigeria is poor. Poor. There are more people. There are more poor people in Nigeria. Than even in fact, there is no average class again in Nigeria. It is either you are rich or you are poor in Nigeria. People are surviving to live instead of I don't know how to say it. Like a lot of people are so they are striving to survive. You will see somebody wake up in the morning, the person will not eat, the person will just wait for like maybe 5 30 or 6 for the person to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then go to bed. You will go to the market. When I was in Nigeria, I went to the market, and, oh my, the prices I saw, I was shocked to my bone marrow. I mean, food stuff should be the cheapest thing every country, you know, should have. Here in Luxembourg, food is not expensive. No, no, no. Food is, you see people eating chicken. I cook rice and chicken. Because chicken is the cheapest meat. Oh yes, chicken is the cheapest meat. With one euro, you can buy chicken. You can buy a box of chicken now. You can even buy a full chicken with less than five euros. So a full chicken, no. Chicken is not food is so cheap. Nigeria is a country that grows crops. Nigeria is a country that the land is very fertile. Nigeria is a country that is blessed with mineral resources. Nigeria is a country that is so blessed. Africa is a virgin place. You understand? Africa is a virgin place. But Nigeria, I come from this country that does nothing good. Only the bad, 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 bad. Okay, so she's talking about the food instability. And obviously with fluctuations in the Naira, things have been coming more expensive. So my thing is, how do you tell people like her that when they come 
to Luxembourg or to the United States and to the Canada, how bad things are. But let me just tell you, what happens when you get people like her who become friends with African Americans and then we ask about going back to Africa? I've met plenty of people like this, like don't go there, don't do it, I'm telling you, you're wasting your time. These are the kind of people that, you know, people from the diaspora meet and people will have bad experiences and she's making some legitimate cases. And, and the reality is, is that things have to improve because if people's own citizens have this to say, how do you get people involved from the diaspora to want to come and be a part of what's going on? There are, there are plenty of opportunities in Nigeria, I definitely would admit, I'm pretty sure there are different uh, opportunities in, in any African country if you're the right person. But when you have these issues, people are going to look at that, you know, like, the, you know, the currency is going up. And, and, and this kind of person doesn't want to hear, oh, it's the white supremacists that are doing it. Because who they see doing these things are everybody that's black. So I just want to know, is this your experience in whatever country that you may have come from? Have you heard these things from certain African brothers and sisters and things like this? Um, are you a person that moved to someplace else and you think you can never go back? Let me find out in the comments, guys. I really appreciate you for your patience and for your time. And as you know, keep it real, King Gunner forever. We're out.